Hi everyone, I'm Debbie, not Debbie Anslow and Debbie Philgate, and uh, that's Nikki over there. You might wonder why we picked Monopoly as our theme. Um, well, we felt it was something that everybody knew about. Uh, most people have played Monopoly. We also feel we're all unique players in the game. Each one of us is different. Most of us want to win the game, um, however we choose to see winning, be it in terms of financial success or just having a good time. None of us, however, know what the game's going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen when we throw the dice. And sometimes we have to reassess what our strategy is going to be for the rest of the game. If we want to continue to play the game, we have to pick ourselves up when things go bad and we have to move forward because some things happen to us which are totally beyond our control in life or in Monopoly. But the most important message to take away is that you're never going to win the game if you give up. So I left school at 18 and I gave up a chance to go to the Royal Academy of Music, um, used my A-level grades and went to the University of Reading where I read history. Hi, I left school at 18 after sitting uh, part of an A-level course. Um, it was the mid-1980s and employment was really high at the time. Um, so I was offered a position as a junior secretary with a firm of chartered accountants. So at the time, I decided that I would go into the world of work rather than continue with my studies. So I, I took up that post and uh, found myself working in West Bromwich for a, a company called Neville Russell. So I found myself at Reading without um, all the support network that I had at home, um, having to manage everything, my finances, be disciplined, be organised, turn up at lectures, get my work in on time. But it wasn't all hard work. Um, it was also about having a good time. And I think most people who go to university do do that. But I did work hard. Um, I got three A's in my first year exams and was then able to move on to do my final degree two-year course, um, which was in history. Um, during that time, I worked as a social secretary at the university. I worked in various faculty and departmental posts. I booked Annie Lennox to play at, uh, at the university and squeezed various other pop groups. Um, basically had a thoroughly good time and emerged at the end of my third year with a 2-1 in history but a first class honours degree in life skills. In the meantime, I was really bored in my job in the office. I realised that um, sitting behind a desk all day, every day, wasn't for me. Um, so <clears throat> I had a bit of a eureka moment one day and decided that I wanted to be an air stewardess. Um, I was still really young. I decided I wanted to see the world, and I thought it would be a really good idea. So. Um, I picked up the Yellow Pages, um, because there wasn't internet at the time, so we had to scour through Yellow Pages. The first airline that I found was Britannia Airways, so I rang them up um, and quite, in quite a blasé way said, well, I want to be an air stewardess, are you recruiting? Um, and they said, yes, we're recruiting in September, so I completed an application form. Um, and a couple of months later, found myself at an assessment centre. If I'd realised at the time that there were 15,000 applications for 150 jobs, I probably wouldn't have been as confident. But because I didn't know, I actually went in and did the assessment centre. Um, and I was lucky enough to be offered a position at Birmingham um, on a temporary contract that was renewed every summer, uh, which I continued to do for three, work, we uh, three weeks, three years. And I had a fantastic time and lots of fun. Well, when I left university, complete with my degree, I thought I was going to work, walk into a job. In fact, I had a job offer when I left university, but it was a recession. And yes, we always seem to be in a recession, don't we? Well, I thought, what am I going to do? And my job, my job, job offer just disappeared virtually overnight. So I went back um, and approached the manager at a Branch of Boots, where I used to work as a Saturday girl and during the holidays. And I asked if I could work there. And they took me on um, in on an indefinite contract, so I was really lucky. Um, I demonstrated and sold cosmetics. And I learned a lot of other things, like stock control, merchandising, and most importantly in life, interpersonal skills, dealing with the general public all the time, people who are happy, sad, cross, whatever their emotional state of being, you have to interact with them. And I learned how to do that. 
um, and it went really well. Um, I was offered um, the opportunity to do um, one of the graduate placement schemes with Boots, um, but I thought about it and realised that retail was not where my heart lay. It didn't feel uh, fair to take a, uh, a job from someone else, possibly, or an opportunity. Um, so I thought I was being quite community-spirited with that, so community chess came in there. And I took a chance. I approached the company that had offered me a job initially, and they called me in for an interview. I was offered the job on the spot, um, and I started simply because I had a degree um, in a well-paid job in finance. Well, after three years of seeing the world, doing a lot of traveling, I worked on long haul and short haul flights, so saw quite a bit of the world. I decided that, although it was great fun, um, the airline didn't really offer me a structured career path. Um, and then I realized that actually by going back and studying and continuing with my education, that I would be offered far more opportunities in the future. So reluctantly, um, I left the, my job as a stewardess. I took another job, um, which was actually in Tipton. Um, so on the, on the Thursday, I was in the Caribbean. Um, and on the Tuesday, I was driving into Tipton, watching the smoke come out of Triplex Foundry at the time. But I actually started um, a part-time um, degree course at Staffordshire University. Um, it took me four years, two evenings a week, while I was working full-time to complete that. Um, and it was really, really hard work. Um, and if you do a degree that way, it's, 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 the hard, it's a hard way to do it. Um, but the advantage is that you can use the work experience that you've already gained and actually utilize that. So I actually found that that was really, really useful. So going to university straight from school has its advantages, but also going to university and doing a degree when you've got some work experience that you can apply was actually really good as well, and that benefited me a lot. So finally, I had a job, um, a job that I thought I wanted at the time. Um, and I started with high hopes and soon realized that the only reason I'd been given the job was because I was a graduate um, and that the lady I was working for um, was the a stereotypical boss from hell. Um, she was absolutely awful and if you had a degree, strangely, she really enjoyed putting you down all the time uh, and it was miserable. But I thought, I'm not going to let this get me down. Um, I could see there was a career path. So I studied again and I qualified professionally this time as a member of the Institute of Credit Management. Um, I did quite well in my exams, I won a national prize and so that opened doors for me. Eventually she left, I had a new boss and uh, he was brilliant, um, gave me far more autonomy, far more control. I had 50,000 live accounts um, and eventually control turnover of um, several million pounds. Um, I was able to travel internationally and nationally. I could make my own decisions. I had all the perks that went with a really well-paid job. But I realized um, as time wore on that in fact being a manager in a finance area wasn't ticking all the boxes. Um, nothing varied. There wasn't really any challenge as such. Um, and so I thought, what am I gonna do? I realized from working on a lot of our legal accounts that I really enjoyed law. So I went back um, home, spoke to my brother, who said, well, I always thought you should have been a lawyer anyway. Why don't you take that? Why don't you try and study for that? And I made a few phone calls and um, eventually got a place at a law college and I studied there, which I'll tell you about shortly. Well, I just finished my degree um, and as I was just finishing my degree, I noticed there was an opportunity uh, with Bernardo's, the children's charity, um, second largest children's charity in the UK. Um, and I applied for a job as a fundraiser in their Midlands region. Um, I got the job um, and I started working for them and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, because I got my degree, my degree was in management and marketing, it allowed me to apply for a promotion um, and I ended up as a regional fundraiser and then over a period of about 10 years um, I worked my way up through the ranks, eventually um, being assistant director of fundraiser, working out of their head office in Barkingside in Essex, um, which was absolutely fantastic, a really good time of my life. 
um, I was responsible with the senior management team for raising over £70 million a year in voluntary income. Uh, £21 million of that from legacies. So it was actually setting up a marketing team, coordinating the fundraising activities. Um, very, very rewarding. Um, a lot of travelling involved because it covered the whole of the UK, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales as well. Um, but really good fun and met some really, really interesting and inspiring people along the way too. Well, I started at Law College whilst I was still working full time. So I was holding down my job Monday to Friday and I used to go to college at the weekends. Um, I loved it. Um, it was really hard work. I did it for two years, but eventually I came out with um, a postgraduate diploma in law and I was able then to think in terms of finding employment uh, as a practicing lawyer. The route I chose to take was the bar, um, so I, not the drinking sort of bar, but the, the other kind of bar, um, although there's a fair amount of drinking at that as well. Um, so I went to, to bar school, and at that time I had to give up my, my job. I saved for two years, so I had a nice, you know, wadge of, of cash, if you like, of savings to finance myself through law college. I went to the Inns of Court School of Law in London, which is the only place that you can actually, at that time, study to be a barrister. Um, there were 800 places nationally, and I got one of them. Um, I passed all my exams. It was rigorous assessment, unlike anything I've ever done in my life. Probably the toughest assessment route I've ever gone. Um, and at the same time, I had to find myself a pupillage, um, which is like the apprenticeship that barristers do. Um, there were 200 of those available. There were over 800 of us at college, mostly Oxbridge um, educated candidates. But I just put my head down. I thought, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I did. Um, I got a pupillage and I learnt uh, so much about myself in the process um, and learnt how to represent um, you know, clients as well. So that was a fantastic opportunity, very, very hard work. Um, eventually, um, having run a successful practice in London, um, I was working on the commercial side of law, um, things changed for me, I met my husband and I realised that I wanted to spend some time raising my own family. Um, wasn't a tough decision to make, in fact it was very easy. Um, and my legal training and my financial training meant that people were approaching me to help them with training, with writing, I wrote textbooks. Um, deliver training courses, ran my own business from home at the same time as bringing my little boy up. And I loved every minute of it. Um, and eventually I was asked to do some teaching. So not having a teaching qualification, I thought, nope, can't do this. And they said, yes, you can. You're used to talking to people. Um, so I went in the classroom down in London um, and I just felt like I'd come home. It was what I always wanted to do. All the strands of my job that I'd done over the years finally came together um, and in the process I was able to set up foundation degrees, work with universities, um, set up online training for organisations and see students win prizes. It's just, it, teaching is amazing if you really, really love it. Um, so I learned a great deal and um, eventually I came to Bourneville College when my husband's job changed and I did my teacher training qualification there. Um, became part of the professional courses team, um, be prom being promoted shortly to assistant curriculum manager for public sector courses, and uh, I'm now curriculum manager for professional courses. And I work with lovely people like Nikki. Um, I count myself blessed that uh, at a time when a lot of people are looking forward to retirement, I'm actually in a job that I absolutely love. Um, I get up early, work long hours, it's fab. Um, couldn't ask for a better job. Um, so I'm very grateful and it's also about putting back into the community and into people what you've had yourself and I hope that I do that every day when I'm in class. Um, whilst I was working at Bernardo's, um, I also um, met um, and got married to my husband and had two children who the ones I keep telling off because they keep standing up they sat here at the front so <laughs> I'm not heckling the audience just just my children sat there um, so I actually found it was quite difficult to um, to manage the commute and such a big role with a lot of traveling 
um, with two very young children. Um, so I made the decision to look for work nearer to home. Um, but I decided that I wanted to retrain and do a, another career. And, and teaching was something that I'd always been interested in. I'd done a lot of sort of development of my own staff in Bernardo's um, and run sort of workshops um, and development programs for them. So it was, it was something that was in my mind. Um, so I was able to secure some part-time work at Bourneville College at the time when it was at the old site, um, the Bristol Road, if any of you are familiar with that area. And um, worked <clears throat> just the odd, while doing my job, while doing a part-time job as well, just doing a couple of evenings teaching some marketing courses and then starting to study for my teaching qualification, which took two years to complete. Um, then I was lucky enough to secure a full-time position as a lecturer at Bourneville College, which I've been doing ever since, teaching on the marketing and management qualifications, which, um, like Debbie, I really, really enjoy. It's very rewarding. Um, and in particular, if you, if you inspire someone to actually go and pursue a career, particularly in marketing, which is a passion of mine, then that's very, very rewarding as well, as well as them actually getting that qualification and that piece of paper at the end of the day too. Um, so, yes, I absolutely love my job. I also work within the college as an advanced practitioner, which is um, as a lecturer, but supporting other lecturers in helping them to develop their skills as well. So working alongside them, um, which again is very rewarding. So that's, that's the end of our presentation. Um, what we wanted to highlight with this, as Debbie pointed out in the beginning, is that finding your career is a little bit like throwing a dice. You really don't know what you're gonna get until you actually start to throw that dice. Um, it is about taking chances, and both of us took chances along the way, giving up secure jobs for something that may not have seen quite as secure as, as the one we gave up. Um, there'll be opportunities to invest in the future, um, and there'll be opportunities to gain that investment back or to give back to others along the way. Um, there'll be lots of stops and starts and changes of direction along the way. Um, and it's very rare to be able to just go straight the way around the board in one go. But actually, there'll be lots of other routes that you'll take as well. And I hope that that's what we've shown today. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, we're happy to take them. Thanks. <laughs>